big Monday night here at the Comedy Store. How you guys doing, live audience? <laughs> you listeners on the other side of the world hear that? That is the sound of Monday night magic, everybody. How exciting. Episode 70-something of Kill Tony, almost 80-something. We lost count at some point, guys. We're at that point of podcasting now where episodes don't even matter. <laughs> Everything's great. So, welcome, guys. This is a very exciting Monday. We have a lot of fun stuff coming up. Um, so, uh, check us out. Kill Tony's coming to Toronto. That's November 7th. That's a really big deal. Or November 9th, one of the two. Something like up. It. One of the other days is the roast of Ron Jeremy, which I'm doing, which looks very promising and exciting. Is John Wayne Bobbitt is on the dais. And so is uh, Screech just got added. Are you serious? Yeah, Screech just got added Jeez. from uh, Saved by the Bell. So um, there you go. That'll be fun in Toronto. But let's talk about tonight, shall we? Is that like like shooting fish in a bucket? When you, when you <laughs> no, no, it's actually not. Cause you have to, it, you know, people think like roasting somebody easy is easy, but. For perfect example, Charlie Sheen, when uh, all that stuff was happening with him, and he had that huge meltdown, the first time that he came back was during the Comedy Central roast of Charlie Sheen. Like, that was a big deal at the time because nobody had seen him. That's why it's still, you know, the most watched roast ever. And anyway, the point is, is that you have to dig deeper to try to find the epic roast joke that everybody will remember instead of something easy. So everybody had to work a little harder and crush, even though the main target would be considered already made fun of. Like if there was a roast of Kim Kardashian, you'd end up hearing 80 jokes. You couldn't even fathom, you know, their power because you got to dig deep. Anyway, after a lecture teaching you all how to write roast jokes, uh, good luck. Um, this is Kill Tony something something. And we have a sponsor, everybody. Her name is Chef Elise Lane, and she's not here right now. Where'd she go? Put your hands together for our chef, Chef Elise Lane, everybody. It's that fucking Stuart Thompson. She started dating a door guy. That's what happened. Now she's distracted. See how quick that happens? Yep. Fucking Stuart Thompson. I knew it. All right. Anyway, she's got a new boyfriend, everybody. Put your hands together for that. <laughs> Who's kidnapped her away from being here. Yeah. She's the, at the girl with the pan. She's on Twitter, at Elise Lane. Um, and something that we do every week is uh, she cooks us and the guests a gourmet meal, and we always enjoy the hell out of it. I used to announce what that meal is myself, but uh, in lieu of something funnier, after a few weeks of doing that, I decided to have our speech impediment infested producer, Josh Martin, the runaround guy, put your hands together for Josh Martin. He's going to read the recipe, everybody. But the catch yeah. is, is that when he reads the recipe, if he stutters, speech impediment Josh, if he stutters or stops at any point in reading the recipe, if he pauses at any moment, he gets flicked in the nuts. <laughs> Monday night, would you be excited to see something like that? I would not. Monday night, belly room, kill Tony 70-something. Would you like to see the opportunity of Josh Martin getting hit in the nuts? There we fucking go. You gonna look at it? What are you doing? Because he has to read it, doesn't he? Let me just tell you, before I hand this okay. to you, that this isn't the hardest one he's ever had to read. La last week was definitely... However, what we found out from the couple weeks of doing this is that his speech impediment usually goes away when he's reading something hard with his nuts getting flicked on the line because we've never had a full nuts flick yet. But I'm hoping that since this one's so easy, that there's just something about it that he stumbles on that's super simple. Yeah, maybe it's the, the curse of writing. I saw that. That's well, it looks pretty clear to me. Oh, I'm not okay. going to I'm not gonna let him off with that. This looks like perfect American print. Okay. So let's do it, shall we? Reading what Chef Elise Lane made for us tonight. Put your hands together for Josh Martin. <laughs> oh, my God. Very easy. Read it. Uh, Vladimir Putin, oven roasted potato wedges with steak and mushroom gravy, garlic herb, cheese curds, 100% vegan poutine with oven roasted potato wedges, mushroom basil gravy with tofu, and the <laughs> what you messed up and on? the no, no. yeast. Oh my god! <laughs> Holy shit! Josh Martin took it. He ran out of breath after tofu. <laughs> that was awesome. I accidentally hit him a little too hard, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
He went for a jog after that. He's getting us all set up because uh, at this point we bring out our uh, head of security. Every week we have a brand new head of security, always to keep us safe. It used to be a man named the Iron Patriot, everybody. But around episode 30-something, he went a little goofy on us and said that he got bigger than the show itself. And that once it gets picked up by Comedy Central, he'd be willing to negotiate having his position back. <laughs> To show him exactly how replaceable he is, we've replaced him every single week since then with a different human being. However, when somebody's good at it, we make him come back. This is this guy's, I believe, third time being the Patriot. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Scott Kidd, everybody. The nerd Patriot. A very nerdy Patriot. Welcome, Scott Kidd. Hey, everybody. There's Chef Elise Lane. Look who just got back from yeah. having a quickie with the door guy. I told I told everybody since you weren't here. I told them she's dating a door guy now, and this is why she's missing her spot. Where were you? Tell the truth. Uh, she was watching him do his fucking wow. set. So that's not Alfredo. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, Scott Kidd. Welcome back. How you doing? I'm good. How y'all doing? <laughs> what are you, a little country patriot tonight? A little bit. Giddy up. How are y'all? Where are you from, Scott Kidd? I'm from Louisiana. Oh, that makes sense. I can there sort of hear that twang. Who dat? All right. <laughs> How about don't do that? Okay. <laughs> Scott, you look fantastic. Converse All-Stars. You're holding the speaker box. Did the thing break? Uh, we're trying to make sure it doesn't. There you go. We have a broken speaker box. So at any point, the speaker box that is attached to his crotch... Might just break. Probably just broke. <laughs> uh... Awesome. Well, Scott, it's good to have you. Any words of wisdom? Are you excited about tonight's episode? Oh, I'm really excited, guys. Come on. How can I not be excited? Who there wouldn't be excited? Jesus Christ, I'm excited. All right. Fitting with the tradition of all of our other patriots, he's a little bit crazy. I mean, you have to understand, it's not that easy to get a guy to dress up like that for an hour and a half. It's true. So put your hands together for Scott Kidd, everybody. So let's get into it, shall we? Tonight's guest, fucking awesome. It's one guy's third time and the other guy's first. I'm so happy to have them because they're two of the funniest people I know. Put your hands together for Jimmy Schubert and Dave Attell, ladies and gentlemen. All super friends, a G.I. Joe, we're getting riled up again. Guns out, looking for weapons of mass destruction. Harassing silver hawks for little women. Welcome, guys. Hello. Hello. Hi, guys. How are you? <laughs> Full house in here at the Kill yeah. Tony podcast. Nice. Thanks yeah. for having us. <laughs> yeah. Dave, welcome to Kill Tony. I've always wanted to get you on the show. Jimmy, this is your third time. How you guys feeling? Good, man. Good. Awesome. Real good. Well, I, uh, I understand that this is uh, not just about me, an old timer, but uh, there's new talent to be had, and I'm always for that. I love that. Thank you. I, <laughs> one of them is uh, Scott Kidd. You ever see anything? You ever perform on a stage with anything like that next to you? Uh, this guy? <laughs> yeah, I went to Hebrew school with him. <laughs> I, I, sorry, I'm just warming up. Jimmy, what do you got? <laughs> uh, I got nothing. <laughs> He's Iron Man. He's I. I really? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I like how both of your ears are locked and loaded, Dave. You have a cigarette between behind. Oh, do I really? <laughs> oh shit! I thought this was a prison show. All right. No, I'm glad to be here, man. This is cool because Tony, I, I told you this before, and uh, of course, Brian, that you guys are like. I see you guys as like the new wave. You're uh, young, and you guys write a lot of jokes, and I like that. You know. Thank you, Dave. It's not just about uh, you know cutting up there and uh, storytelling and whatnot, right. and you guys land some punchlines you know Thank you. I love but you, you kind of lose it in um charisma <laughs> now <laughs> it's true i've been to like house flipping auctions that are more exciting than this well let's pump it up guys yeah this guy's got the stage presence of a gay snail now what's the next thing <laughs> you'll make you won't you got nothing for the robot but you'll fire uh, off at me we're supposed to make fun of the robot i fucking love you bro i got nothing for the fucking robot I, I, every time i come there's a different guy in a fucking robot outfit i don't you know, I don't want to fucking hurt his feelings. He probably oh, bruised like a grape that he's going to fucking be in a fucking costume for the whole show like that. I don't know the format. So what is his job? Is he supposed to, like, uh, bring us? He, he's supposed to keep IT? us safe just in case anything crazy happens, which has never happened before in 70-some episodes of doing this. 70-some episodes. Give it up, guys. Yeah. How about a hand for free, le free downloads? Yeah. <laughs> And the other part of it is, and that's what we'll do right now, is he always asks our guest a question so that I don't have to. In like zeros and ones robot talk or in regular people talk? 
There he goes. Oh, there we go. Fire it up. What do you got for us tonight, Scott? Well, uh, Jimmy. Nice to meet you, by the way. Nice to meet you. Um, been doing a little bit of research on you, of course. I, I noticed that you're a middle child of six brothers. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, also, your dad was a detective. Yeah, you, so you read my bio. Fantastic. Well, I, I kind of had a shady past, you know, growing up as a kid. I was wondering, what, what was the worst situation that your dad ever got you out of? Anytime he had to get me out of fucking jail, I was getting an ass beaten all the way to fuck home. And he had this forearm punch that he used to do. He'd have his hand in his pocket. He goes, yeah, let me he would bring that elbow up and just knock you out. Oh, is that like a European uppercut? No, it's a fucking elbow punch. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> wow. This isn't your Odie, This isn't your only credit, is it? You also played the gimp in that uh, Quentin Tarantino movie, right? That's right. In and nobody box. knew what you looked like there either, correct? All right, thanks for sharing. That's how no he got the role. Scott, what's your question for Dave? Well, Dave, I I, I know you wrote for uh, SNL. I, I know you were on Dr. Katz. Uh, you had your own show, Insomniac, which is fucking beautiful. Um, I was just wondering, what's your favorite kind of beer? My favorite kind of beer? Well, that's an interesting question coming from a robot. Um, to be honest, Scott, beer I always thought was like just the shoehorn that would get the whiskey down. Yeah. So it was always like, you know, whatever was the cheapest beer was the best beer. But I know now we live, you guys, the millennials here with your designer beers, you know, they all like have a flavor, you know, they're supposed to taste like a father who listened. I understand. So, excellent question, Scott. Thank you. My mother cared. <laughs> My mother cared about me more than law school. Uh, <laughs> I get it. Fucking brilliant. Sorry. Fucking awesome. Well, you guys know how the show works. 36 comedians signed up for the opportunity to do one minute on this stage. We're not going to get through all of them, but some people are going to be lucky enough to have that minute and chat with us afterwards and be on a cool podcast. So, you guys, comedians, I think you know how it works. You know that your minute is up when you hear the sound of a kitty. You can barely hear that little baby kitty. You hear that? Listen to that. There it is. Now you want to wrap it up then, or else you're going to bring out the angry West Hollywood bear. It sounds furious tonight. There's a little bird at the end. Wow. Just for uh, timing, or lack thereof. Uh, is this a show designed for people on Molly? You know what it is? Just <laughs> sounds? It works. A lot of our listeners say uh, it goes great with... Uh, with Molly. All right. <laughs> Just checking. So uh, let's get things, this thing started. You guys ready? Yeah. We're going to the bucket. Is that a picture of you in your wallet? No. You carry pictures here, Sal? It's fucking business cards, asshole. It is business cards. All right, guys. Your first comedian tonight doing a minute goes by the name of Chris Hopkins. Yeah. Do it, Chris. Chris Hopkins. Oh, shit. Chris Hopkins. You know what that means. If you don't show up and you miss your spot, that means you get permanently blacklisted. Wow. There you go. That's what happens. All right. That is the noise that happens if somebody misses their spot. <laughs> Rarely ever happens with the threat of being blacklisted, but... That's the penalty for not for coming in? <laughs> yeah. You already didn't show up. That's like saying... <laughs> If you don't show for jury duty, we'll give you a ride further away from jury duty. <laughs> That's so true. All right. Put your hands together for Jeremy Paul. Oh. Jeremy Paul. All right. Yes. Here we come. Yes. He's in the house. Hey. I, uh, I'm a nice dude. I have a lot of friends that post on Facebook and recently a friend of mine has been posting pictures of herself in Aruba which is nice but the problem is she owes me $700 uh, you don't get to go on vacation when you owe me $700 where's my fucking money uh, so here's what's gonna happen um, who here has a car uh, I will pay y'all $700 when well, no, $100 to take me down to her place in Lake Elsinore so I can rob it uh, seriously, I got a hundred bucks. Who want to give me a ride? You don't, I got to work tomorrow. I got to be up at four in the morning. She's in fucking Aruba. That's some bullshit. My fucking money. Uh, no, can I get a ride, Dave, please? A uh, hundred bucks. 
super it up. I'm in. Let's go. Lake Elsinore. <laughs> there it is. The sound of a kitty. I think he's... I don't know if he really wrote that. I think he's just genuinely asking for a ride. I like uh, that. <laughs> I have a question. How long have you been doing comedy? Uh, since 03. Okay. Well, hey, you yeah. know what? I think it's awesome, but I'm going to tell you something that I recently learned. Yeah. Coming on stage with a weird bag <laughs> takes everybody out of the fucking zone. Everybody's like, what has he got in that bag? Yeah, is he going to pull out a puppet? What is he going to do? <laughs> so I learned that myself, dude. Well, Don't come I, up with a weird... I would have left the bag, but Boom Sakalaka's walking around. Oh, I understand. Yeah. I understand. There you go. And the keys? Well, what is in the bag? Uh, my notebook and my, uh, my laptop. So. No way, really? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. All right. Does that chick really owe you seven hundred dollars? Yeah. And she's in Aruba. Yep. Okay. Good. Wow. Nice. See. What'd you, what'd she? Uh, what'd you lend her the money for? Uh, for her rent. She's a family friend. So. Yeah. Somebody take her to Aruba. Or did she yeah. pay for it? Somebody took her to Aruba so they can afford to give me back my mo fucking money. You know what I'm saying? Aruba right. is not the funniest of the islands. All right. <laughs> okay. I would go. I'm an old hack. Jimmy, back me up on this old school. Aruba, not a funny island. I would go with Haiti. Would you do Haiti or no? Haiti would work if she wasn't in Aruba. All right, well, how do you get to Haiti? You just go to Aruba, hang a right, don't stop till you hear screams. So, <laughs> come on, at least buddy up here, for God's sakes. I'm in. This guy's a lone wolf. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think, Jimmy? I hope you get your $700 back. I, 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 I'll be waiting for her when she gets back from her trip. You know? Yeah, she has a nice 52 inch screen that I'm a steal if somebody gives me a ride. Well, all right. Well, you just said we that on a fucking. You just said one. that on a fucking podcast. Yeah. That get it's like robbing her and then posting pictures on Facebook and getting visited <laughs> by the police. What's wrong? Nobody knows how to commit fucking crime no. anymore. I do. You don't fucking tell everybody you're going to do it. You just fucking do it. No. You, here's what you do. You tell people you're going to do it on a podcast so that when the cops come, they no, it was artistic expression. No, wow. Was, it wasn't me. I was yeah, except lying. for the fucking artistic expression of the fucking 58-inch TV in your fucking living room <laughs> that matches her serial number. And Excuse then your me. fucking baseball hat and your asshole wants to become the same size because you're in fucking sea block and gutted by some fucking guy <laughs> named fucking Tom. I didn't know that this was... I thought this was a comedy show, not find America's next master criminal. <laughs> <laughs> who's, who's the next guy? The penguin? Is he coming up here? Is Doc Ock waiting in the background? <laughs> <laughs> Tony, what kind of show is that? There's a wholesome show of uh, dick jokes and whatnot. <laughs> Jeremy, do you, now the bag you said because there's people around the inn, you don't want to no. steal it. Now, do you normally wear your keys around your neck on a necklace like that? Latch key yeah. kid, right? Yeah. You, you have all your keys on that thing. Yeah. And, and also a set of nail clippers. Yeah. Yeah. And not even the small nail clippers. Those are actually those are actually toenail clippers. You're goddamn right. So now that we figured out, you, the, you can cut that this, fucking toenail right down to the quick with those fucking things. Look at that. Is this he something, trims his hedges with those things. He doubles a hedge trimmer. Is this something urban? Should we not go there yet? Or is, is this? Will white kids be doing this in a year? What is this? Uh, it's it's a way to carry a weapon without carrying a I weapon. I like your stuff. Right. So that's somebody tries good. to jump you, you give him a fucking mani petty and stuff. Yeah, like, yeah, that's, nice. that's a closer. I like Move it. it along. I that's like a closer. It. It. Jeremy nice. Paul, everybody. Nice. There he goes. Nice. Good kid. Nice. He's on Twitter at Jeremy Paul Says. So, for those of you out there, for you uh, police officers who are looking for the guy that uh, stole that stuff, he's on Twitter at Jeremy Paul Says. Um, let me ask you something that I always ask guests that are on for the first time, and I think I've already asked you this, but yeah. maybe tell a different story when it comes to you, Jimmy. But okay. I always ask everybody, Dave, uh, is there something you did on stage when you first started out? Uh, doing comedy that you can't believe you did that you totally regret like something stupid or silly. can I tell you what I really regret the yeah. most anytime I ever wore a suit on stage because I'm, I'm like ugly to begin with but like suiting it up it, it, it like put like just a tinge of like special needs on it like oh, look at this guy thinking he's a normal look at this fucking freak I wish I had the balls to walk up here with a, a toenail clipper and several several keys to cars he doesn't have <laughs> oh God! That's so oh, true. I wonder what he wears for Halloween if he's dressed like that now. I don't <laughs> know. True. Halloween ideas. What do you think, Scott? Uh, vampire pirate. Come on, dude. Really? Uh, Already? <laughs> that's it. I mean, two ply mummy. 
All right. I go with the Kmart costumes. How about you guys? You like I was going to go with Dracula Untold, but I'm going to look. Uh, what, what's Untold? I've seen the fucking 37 versions of that same fucking story. What, did he have braces when he was little? What are you fucking leaving out? What am I missing? Mm-hmm. What's fucking Untold about the fucking Dracula story? I've seen it 99 fucking times. Yeah. But I, I may go out as Dracula Untold. Yeah. I usually go as something, um, you know, annoying but not threatening, like uh, the UN. Or, uh, <laughs> so, sorry. <laughs> Jimmy, what's your answer for uh, can't believe you did it when you were starting uh, I, it? Believe it or not, this is a fucking true story. I was trying to figure out what the fuck I was doing, and uh, I went up on stage and did this character called the Humorator, a comic from the 27th century where I came out with these fucking stupid glasses, and I had these fucking things on my eyelids, and it was just a fucking ridiculous idea, and I'm sorry I ever did it. <laughs> it was like fucking, it was like watching yourself in a gay porn when I think back and I see that fucking tape. It's like, ah, what was I thinking? Ooh, it's on tape? I I no, I don't know. <laughs> tape. I fucking destroyed it. <laughs> Brian, what are you going to go as for Halloween? Uh, Dean Delray. Uh, oh, <laughs> neat. Oh. Not bad. Not bad. Comedian. And Tony, what are you going to go as a... I'm uh, I'm gonna be in New York City for Halloween, so I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to improvise the day of. Why don't you go as a speed bump? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm joking, people. It's a fucking comedy podcast. Yeah. Shut the fuck up. We're fucking joking. Don't oh, come on. I love fucking Tony. I'm teasing. No, it's okay. I actually I actually might end up going as a speed bump. No. <laughs> Guys, your next comedian, everybody, goes by the name of Fang Chow. Love it. Love it. So there he is. Chow. Uh, how are you guys doing? How are you? Hi. Great. Uh, I'm really excited. It's my first time on this stage. Uh, you guys don't know me, and I don't know you guys. If you don't, very Chinese. <laughs> now, when you see a Chinese guy on stage with a microphone, jokes are on the way, guys. <laughs> it's about to pay off. I am very Chinese, but I don't like the Chinese girls here is why. Because they are bitchy and stuck up all day, every day, no problem. <laughs> For no reason. Because they think they have the smallest pussy in the game. <laughs> so they win. Smallest pussy in the game, but they don't have titties and ass. Fish has a smaller vagina. You don't see me go fuck a fish, right? Thank you. That's my time. Thank you. Fuck yeah. 59 Ah, seconds. Are you from China? Yeah. What providence? Um, Beijing. Beijing? Yeah. Uh, What are you eating? Get the fuck out of here. No, I fucking. Did you you guys guys just order without me? No, we just. Yeah, yeah, he ordered some orange no, cat. I just, I just, I just asked him if he'd eat. Yeah, that's all. Wow. I was over. I was fucking. Uh, Who isn't wet with that half-ass <laughs> stripper Chinese being thrown around? <laughs> oh, I, I know enough Chinese. Right. They're gonna work around the fucking sauna over there. You know what I'm saying? Can I ask you a question? Oh uh, yeah, right. Up. Yeah. Uh, Wang Chung. What is your name again? <laughs> Chung Fao. <laughs> Chung Fao, right? Uh, yeah, Chung, that's my slave name. But no, I, what is your name? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me ask you something. Uh, Feng Chao. Feng Chao Feng is Chow. my name. How do you do comedy and also have the time to build Scott? <laughs> oh, uh, my cousin did it. My cousin did it. And uh, I'm just here to do comedy. How long you been here? Oh, uh, you in LA? Yeah, yeah. In, uh, five months. Five months. Um, well, you're from China? Yes. That's Beijing. excellent, dude. That's excellent Beijing, English, dude. Yeah. Give that's a a fuck, yeah, that's a fucking yeah. cool. Yeah, give it up for Dave, too. His English is pretty good, too. He, I'm actually, just kidding. I'm just believe kidding. it or not, Don't worry he about came it. to L.A. to get rid of the fucking air pollution over there. It's fucking amazing, isn't it, over there? Yeah, because I was thinking. Fang, yeah. how long have you been doing stand-up? A um, little bit more than a year. That's excellent. Wow. A right. little bit more than that's a year. That's fun. I You're learned English first. And yeah. yeah. Now... <laughs> What I like the most is that you took on your own kind. You have a problem with Asian women. Yes, sir. Is that is that just a joke? Is that a joke or? Um, no, he's right. I, I, Asian I, women, they I don't dress like sexy. Them. They look nice, but they, they they don't know how to be sexy. It's like fucking right. a starfish. <laughs> wow. no, I'm just That's saying. A lot of hate on. Going on here. No, it's not. I'm just being serious. I think we need an Asian woman to retort this. Oh, sure. Asian woman in the crowd. Come on. Well, they got to earn the mic time, right? Like, a, you know, a <laughs> wow! Bang! You are somebody on run outside fire. and see what year it is. <laughs> 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 
Do you get up? Do you get up a lot? <laughs> um, at the comedy store or comedy shows? I mean, do, 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 do no, you... no, not a lot of shows. Your I... stage presence amazing for doing comedy such a little time. What's your yeah. full time job? Um, I do uh, some um, translation. Oh, you're uh, a hacker. Chinese and oh. uh, <laughs> half there. They've half there, but you translate yeah. English to Chinese. Macro. Yeah, Mandarin. Yeah, yeah. Not bad. It, it, it fucking sucks, but you know. No, I'm telling you, it, for a guy who's been doing it about a year, it, it's cool. You know, comedy in a minute is difficult. You right. Know? And uh, you know, to be able to get out like two or three, you know, hard one-liners, that's great. So. Yeah. You know. Yeah, because it's I, I come here. Um, I start coming here. I think it's a cool uh, show, and uh, like it's only one minute. I can't just like oh, you know, like let me tell you guys about China, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Forever. <laughs> No, well, he's right. There's a lot of fucking Chinese people. It's like one point seven, seven billion. The point seven, the point point seven is more than we have in our entire country. For yeah. every fucking Chinese guy, there's like nine Chinese guys. That's a lot of fucking Chinese people. <laughs> uh, now that you're in America, what kind of uh, girls do you find yourself the most attracted to? Now that you're getting a taste of everything. Um, I, I think uh, just girls in general. White girls. Let's do that. You like a white. Now I'm a fucking racist. No, yeah. you're not. No, you're not. no, no, that's no, no, no I'm just being honest. Every, you're every, fine. I think a lot of people are more attracted to one race or type. You know, everybody has a different style. So you're saying like white girls, like white blonde. Uh, no, fuck the blondes. No. Whoa! Wow. Look at that. Oh, this guy's crazy. I went to college to be smart. <laughs> oh <laughs> shit! <laughs> Look at the blondes. Jog what college drop? <laughs> what college did you go to? Uh, in China, in Beijing, the, it's a uh, uh, the f uh, Beijing first language uh, foreign language study. Oh, I went to college in China too, DeVry University. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so, good for you. I just had to funny it out. Turned out good. Yeah, that's called a winner. All right, let me win one. Okay, there you go. Oh, this isn't '53. There's no more talk. Oh, that's fucking DeVry University. I wish there was an exchange, like like an Asian exchange rate that we can give you like two white women for two Asian women. Oh, this is just like out of control. Right. Trading <laughs> women. No, we're smoking people. Now. Scott, yeah, yeah, pull we'll the cops on your show. dick. We'll talk after the show. Good. All right. Well, uh, Fang, yeah. I, I hope that you come back yeah, really definitely. soon. Yeah, I will. Really, Thank really you. funny. Right. Keep, Keep it going for him. Take it easy, man. Nice. He's on Twitter at FangChow8080. So you can be... <laughs> <laughs> that's his Twitter handle? Yeah. What is oh, that's neat. F-E-N-G-C-H-A-O-8080. Nice. Nice. That rings right off the tongue. <laughs> Beautiful tweet. <laughs> Okay, let's keep it moving along. Your next comedian oh. is Daniel White. Oh, really a white. Is that every uh Hi Daniel? Hey buddy. Howdy. Howdy, yeah, give it up. Alright, right, any of you heard of Moses before? Yeah. Yeah? Man, that guy did some cool shit, didn't he? Or if you're Egyptian, some fucking terrifying shit. You know what I mean? Like, and then he did some all around lame shit, you know? He led an entire race of people around a desert for 40 fucking years in circles, you know? And so, and I looked it up the other day, and like walking from Cairo to Jerusalem is supposed to take like a week. So fucking Moses pretty much pulled a gill again. You know what I mean? Fuck it. <laughs> That shit's fucking SS Minnow, three hour tour. And so fucking, what's more fucked up is that God told Moses that he'd never enter the promised land. And Moses was just like, they don't know that. You know what I mean? And then fucking, he came down from Mount Sinai a second fucking time. And somebody goes, what you got there? Oh, just, these are some new commandments, you know? And he goes, well, what? Did God say anything to you about the fucking first set? You, you know, you broke? Uh, no. There you go. Finish it. Finish it, son. Finish, finish it. it. He said, yeah, uh, no. He said, uh, the fuck, the promised land, he said, the promised land is really far away, and everything we see is going to look really fucking familiar. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, you brought up the horse. <laughs> um, first time. Oh, first time. This is the yeah, first time ever on stage? Wow. First time first, ever on stage? First time on stage as a comedian. Oh, good for wow, you. Wow, we're in together for Daniel White. 
Daniel, that's awesome. That's, First time ever on ball. stage. Breaking his cherry on the Kill Tony podcast. In front of David <laughs> Pell. That's got to be crazy. In front of these guys. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, monsters. Then. And for the first guy, what did you do? You said you were on stage before, so what else did you do? Like some kind of... Uh, a musician. Oh, okay, there you go. What was your instrument? Uh, bass, guitar. Ooh. Christian band? <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. Um, so uh, you decided to go with the ever-topical uh, Moses and Ten Commandments. <laughs> I thought about that. I thought I'd go... Fresh topical, off the presses. Go topical, i go, like, religious... Yeah, I, I wouldn't ask people if they know who Moses is. Most people know who the fuck he is, so you could save yourself a step there and just assume people know him. It's like you're asking permission to tell the joke. Just fucking go into it and assume wow. everybody knows who fucking Moses is. Tough love. <laughs> what about the Gilligan's Island reference? I well, mean, how the, old the are these thing, kids? It sounded like you said... topical. It sounded like you said... Were you raised by grandparents that you know <laughs> Gilligan's Island and Moses? <laughs> yes. Yes, as a matter of fact. <laughs> You really were? <laughs> Gilligan's Island, Munsters, and I Dream of Genie. Oh, how old are you that you know this stuff? Uh, 27. Oh, Weird. Jesus. Wow, Weird. a lot of Nick at night for you. Yeah, huh? really. <laughs> Too much. Where are you from? Uh, I told you L.A. earlier. That was a fucking lie because I don't like to tell people I'm from... Well, I got a room in Bakersfield, California. Fuck yeah, dude. Wow. Wow. Nice. You see how hard it is to come out of the Bakersfield closet? <laughs> I, Imagine I'm being from on, a bro. place where you're that I ashamed. Get, I, I get, I'm sorry when I tell people that in Washington, D.C. Somehow I get, I'm sorry. When I tell <laughs> Bakersfield is a tough, it's a tough ride. Yeah. Well, you seem very well spoken for being from Bakersfield. So I'm guessing like, yeah. you're like the Walter White's son. Whoever's running that entire operation, the smartest guy. Oh, I got guy. the fuck out of there as soon as I could. I 27? Uh, well, <laughs> it's all right. no, I'm out of there. I've been out of there. I've been down here now for a few years. UCLA. I love it. Nice. The fact that the first time you're ever doing comedy in front of a robot and a podcast, that's that's fucking balls, dude. Yeah. That's yeah. the easy yeah. part, no offense. Man. That was the easier thing. You've done that before, performed with robot. What kind of music did you play? Oh, I play jazz and blues. Oh, that's cool. You must have made Very hundreds cool. of dollars a year playing jazz. Why would you oh. give that up? <laughs> I'm going to give up my jazz. <laughs> what, what instrument did you play? play bass guitar. There's nothing better than a white guy who loves jazz. I love that. And bass guitar. Don't, yeah. And bass guitar. Well, there you go. You got to double up on not getting booked. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> did, 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 He's got a gig coming up next week. He's doing Lil Lenny Horowitz's Bar Mitzvah, right? Mm -hmm. Do you always have the face like you lost your puppy? Oh, <laughs> you're a good looking guy. <laughs> <laughs> I could see him playing some uh, a, a Superman down the road, you know, like, you know, like a Smallville type, you know, like a friend or something like that. Uh, too Smallville, yeah. like one of those, uh, you know, like a, a, a like a young teen, like a werewolf or something or something like that. Are you an actor also? Oh no, 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 no. not at all. All right, let I me ask be an you, actor. Daniel. I'm going to ask you a question. I call the Ron Funches question that I haven't asked in quite a while. Uh, he was great at this, and I, I fell in love with this question. What scares you? Oh, Jesus. Oh, shit. Uh, that first thing that just popped in your head that you don't want to say, just like Bakersfield. Oh, it's having to go back to Bakersfield. Yes. Mm. That scares me. Boys, no, it is. It's my motivation for just, that's all my motivation. Don't go back to Bakersfield. That's it. How about Modesto? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Who cares? I'm up here. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, what is, is which turn? Do you have more material? Like, is all your material religious based, or do you oh, have any? Oh well, were you planning on coming here for your first time, or did oh, you yeah, signed I had, up? I had a whole three minutes. <laughs> I got to break it down to one. There yeah. you go. So Another you picked one. the yeah, it's kind of religious. Saint George. Fuck. What? Are, you, you grew up really, really religious, right? Oh, I grew up in a uh, by, raised by old people. Fucking Bible Belt transplants. Will you run for president? I will never <laughs> run for president. All right. I would not want to subject the country. Well, if you could get people back into jazz, that would be great. I mean, <laughs> I mean, yeah. The people that raised you, how'd they end up in Bakersfield? Oh, uh, that's, that's very fucking boring, Tony. That's <laughs> construction. <laughs> building were, churches? Oh, building everything, building most of the town. They lost a bet, tell them the truth. I'm yes. just going to say what the crowd's thinking. The white is getting more time than the brown and the yellow. Right. <laughs> it's because uh, he's actually uh, Scott Kidd's twin brother. Yeah. Underneath that mask, they look no exactly way. the no, same. Really? Take it off. Show everybody. 
Wow. Oh, that's not even close. Close. No, he's not wearing his glasses. No, I am. They're just stuck to the mask. Daniel, it says here that you're <laughs> It says here that you're not on Twitter, is that right? Um uh, following in the steps of Jason Manzukis and just well, nobody good. knows who that off is either. Grid, so, I'm Jason with you Manzoukas? on that. So. Nice. Yeah, who's Jason Manzukis? <laughs> exactly. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a hairy brown dude. She's hairy. Got a big old beard. I'm sorry for smoking, guys. It's no, just, these young boys uh, wearing me out. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, we're gonna rock on. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Oh, wow. Daniel, first time on stage. That is balls. Give first time ever on stage, Good job. guys. Good job. You'll be seeing him again outside in the parking lot for about four years. <laughs> uh, fuck yeah. That's an interesting one. This that is excellent. Fun times. Ooh, get? this is exciting. This guy uh, worked the door here for uh, a couple years, and he just recently got fired from his job here. Wow. And the free nice. agent, everybody. Put your hands Fuck together yeah. for Carlos De Jesus. Oh, Carlos right. De Jesus. What's up, buddy? Yeah, that happened. <laughs> oh, boy. So, uh, all right. I had a thought the other day. Um, let's say aliens came down tomorrow and they made contact with us. But instead of their first words being, we come in peace, or take me to your leader, or nanu nanu, whatever the hell they say, their first words to us, to us are, what's up, my niggas? <laughs> like, how would that, how would you react? You know, I'd be like, holy shit, these aliens are cool as fuck, man. They get it, you know? <laughs> They'd probably be bumping Biggie, too. That'd be amazing. That's how I feel, at least. All right. That's how I feel. Okay, so here's a joke then. All right, so a chicken crosses the road and walks into a bar, and the bartender says, "Hey, you're not a Jew." <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm done. That was there you good. Go. <laughs> I think it's great. Most people don't go with the "Oh, here's a joke" approach at 40 seconds, but uh, <laughs> you, you pulled the trigger on that one. That's a ballsy move. I think it takes ultimate confidence to go "Here's a joke" and then to deliver a great yeah. uh, white power message at the end of that. <laughs> <laughs> I would say in the beginning it was a little rough, you dropping the end bomb and all, but uh, let's face it, you earned it working here, so you know what it's like <laughs> to be a slave. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, any thoughts? How, how, how long you been? How long you working before they fired you? Uh, three years. Good. Oh, well, you're on the bigger, better things now. Yeah, exactly. I started working the door here. You shouldn't have to do what I had to do. <laughs> Drop a little nut butter in the fucking. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, well. Anyway, well, you know what I'm saying. All right. Good. <laughs> uh, Carlos, uh, how's life been going? How long, how long has it been since you've been fired? Uh, about two weeks now. Maybe two and a half weeks. So Just what's banned for a week? Interesting. Yeah. I was banned for a week, so I got fired on my day off. Nice. Hmm? What's changed? How do you feel? Um, I mean, it, it feels a little more free. Like, I can actually do comedy now, Like, so that's a good thing. Right. You've never been on this show before, and we've been doing it for... Well, I've, I've been on it once, I believe. Right. Once. Okay. Maybe twice. It's very, it's very memorable, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great that you're getting to go up, and I mean, I'm sure you learned... A little bit of chops here at working here, getting right. all those spots all those years. I think that's about a good enough amount of time. How long did you work here for, Jimmy? Uh, probably about three, four years. Yeah. yeah. And did, did you, get you ever fired? work at a? What's that? I graduated from Doorman to Runner. Uh, Do they still have that here? Uh, no, it was a, it was a, 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 a position. You used to have to run, take stuff back to law firms, but it was a great job because you had, you had like a. a Petty cash, you had a beeper, you had the Jeep, the comedy store Jeep, you used to drive around. And, wow. Back yeah. when it was fun to have yeah, a back beeper. back when I was fucking his age, and, you know, I was, like, was sleeping on couches and doing my yeah. thing, and I had the fucking job, so it was That's nice. That's great. Dave, you ever worked at a comedy club? Yeah, I did. I worked at the original Improv in New York City. Wow. Yeah. How long and did you work there? What was that like? About a year or so, mm -hmm. and uh, it was awesome. No, it sucked. It sucks when you work at a comedy club, because, uh, you know, it's good in a way, because I suck so badly, so I got to see a lot of comedy. Good and bad, and then at the end of the night they throw throw us on, you know, like for the bar rag for the scraps. But um, you know, all I'm going to say is that uh, I was banned from a comedy club too for a year, and I came back harder than ever. Right. And um, you know, they banned me, but they kept my puppet, and I thought that was really uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, we split. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I uh, I think they should rename the po the podcast jokes and awkward. 
It's a little <laughs> awkward. That's, that's, yeah, that, that is what it is. And I love those moments. Um, <laughs> Did you, you worked here for years, right? Yeah. You don't work here now, though, right? No. You got no. fired, too, right? Yep. I got fired, and they banned me, a performance ban for a week. But uh, I went down to the La Jolla Comedy Store and performed there for that entire week and took a vacation. Oh, Stayed at the go. condo that's right by the ocean. I took full advantage. Oh, yeah. That's nice. It was really interesting. The whole time feeling like I was getting away with murder. <laughs> but I deserved it. I worked my ass off for years. Right. But I'm going to say you have you definitely look like you you definitely uh, are, are cool with being on stage. And that took me like seven years. So, you know, good for you. Thanks, man. I yeah, appreciate really. that. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Carlos, how do you feel? Uh, I feel good. I just hope nobody comes and fights me afterwards for that first bit that I did. Yeah. Well, no, I mean it was a soft day, but I, I just, I just think there's so many, I just think there's so many funnier things that the alien could say, right? Like, that, that aren't that. I mean, if you really feel like that's the direction you want to take it, then yeah, take me to your leader. Yeah, right but now. that had a lot more to do with the times we live in, and you know, Ferguson and other things. Did you see? Did you really listen to the joke? No. Huh. <laughs> I was trying to alt my way. <laughs> he was talking about the global warming and, uh, you know, whatever, uh, you know, vaccinations and shit. There's a lot in that joke that you didn't hear. So. Yeah, no, no, there's not. <laughs> I'm trying to build you up, dude. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I recently listened to some of my old material, and when Obama was uh, uh, running to be president, uh, I had a soft A joke that I use, and I, I fucking hate listening to myself even say it now. I don't know, man. If I think if the joke was really, really worth it, I would even go there. But most of the time, you find it's not even worth it. Do you mean? Right. Like you said you think some. You're hoping somebody doesn't beat you up after that. You shouldn't think that. You know. <laughs> right. Right. I don't think anybody actually will. I yeah. Mean, even if you said "what up, fool," you're still taking an urban approach, and right. It's it's funnier because you're not going to make everybody uncomfortable. I would so change could, it to they go, "Hey, can I get a ride to Aruba?" <laughs> Uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, sorry, guys. Uh, easy, nail clipper. Put the nail clipper away. That's a full-blown toenail clipper. That thing is huge. You can't even take that on an airplane. And he wears it around its neck. Guys, that's Carlos De Jesus, Thanks, everybody. Carlos, De Jesus. Carlos. He's on Twitter at zombie underscore sharks. Zombie underscore sharks. That's great. Find Carlos de Jesus. On you know, there. I hate to say it, uh, Tony. Is it always a sausage fest like that? How about the How about the ladies? Are no, there any ladies there, coming you know, up? There's a lot of ladies that sign up, and there's two regulars that go on at the end that are both ladies. But uh, maybe we'll get lucky here. Oh, this is a guy that sort of looks like a lady. <laughs> Another employee here, currently still working here. Put your hands together for Jared Levin. Jungle Book. Dude, I didn't think I was going to get off. Um, I, I don't know, man. This is one of the few places they'll actually hire me. <laughs> like, I, I, I try to be a forklift driver, and they fired me the first day. I ran over with a, a box with a guy sleeping in it. Like, how am I supposed to know people sleep in boxes? <laughs> I'm like, what do you want me to do? Speak tongues and revive it? <laughs> that joke's funny in tongues. <laughs> That's a long setup. <laughs> uh, I, I might go, did I do that in a minute? 37 seconds, bro. <laughs> Keep it going. Oh! My brain is like, dude, I don't even know the time, man. People always ask me for drugs all the time. I don't know why. Still have five seconds. <laughs> Act out. Describe what you're doing. Dead, dead, dead. Yeah. I'm Buttoning pulling your up shirt. My pants. Pulling up his pants. Wedgie. There you go. <laughs> there, there you go. There we go. Brought out a chicken. That's there you great. go. I mean, we're just <laughs> really There's no me. more format for that, I guess. <laughs> um, Jared. Uh, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> Your first words were, I wasn't expecting to get up. And yeah. uh, it really showed the whole minute after that. Yeah, I know. You were really like a one-man improv group. Oh, yeah. I liked it. I do suggestions. You're either the best comic we've seen so far or every guy I've ever met in Costa Rica. <laughs> either way, <laughs> you've got a nervous energy. 
So you ran over a guy in a box. Is that real? Did you actually yeah, hit I got fired as a forklift driver. You did? Yeah. On the first day. It just, you know, when you're a forklift driver, you usually use forklifts to pick up boxes, so it's kind of impossible for you to kind of run over a box. I ran over a box. Now, I know from you hanging out here a lot, and I've seen a lot of you over the past, <laughs> what, couple years you've been here? Yeah, a couple years. Okay. Uh, and I know you're a pretty big pot smoker. So my question is, <laughs> is when you got fired the first day driving this forklift, did you get high beforehand? No, I was just being me. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, then I understand why you smoke pot all the time. I get That's it. True. I mean, if you're going to run people over and get fired, might as well be Does a... pot calm you down? Um, honestly, it just does the same thing, except I get hungry. Well, you have... <laughs> <laughs> Well, one you have pot abs. I like that when you're showing everybody that. It is such a shame the podcast listeners can't hear that smile that's on your face awkwardly after everything you say. Like, is that a smile or are you just like, is that just a, is that your normal face? Like, what? Is, it's weird. Like, I'm getting a call from it, the it's president. A combination. Comedy. Like, I enjoy being on stage, but I'm also, I also have a, I just smile a lot. You have a great look, dude. Thanks. Have you ever been in any kind of like a, one of these like a role playing kind of things, like a cosplay kind of thing? <laughs> Are you ever a Power Ranger or anything like that? I always wanted to be a Power Ranger. Well, I can totally see you doing that. Has the like Lifetime uh, Network asked you to play uh, Richard Ramirez in a Night Stalker <laughs> fucking series? I knew he was going to call me. You have a great you know, look, dude. I'm getting yeah. ready. You have that. We was that an earthquake or am I just really high, like four in the morning in front of your house kind of look? Yeah. <laughs> hey. I meant trailer. <laughs> All right. Either way, <laughs> dude, you paid. You you still work here now? Yeah. Okay. Good. It's a miracle. Now you really thought that a minute was up at about you know when I told you I think you said I think I said thirty seven seconds. You had waited about five seconds before then. So at about thirty two seconds, you thought that you had done a minute. Yeah. So when you do other spots, is that a thing where like you have no idea what time you're doing? Well, usually if I. The longer time I have, the more I draw out my bits. Yeah. So, like, especially, like, uh, I'll do something completely out there, and then I'll just be me, and then I'll stare at the audience. So you'll bounce that microphone stand off your stomach another seven fucking times before. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. I love that. <laughs> that was my favorite part. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I can see that. Interesting. It's hard to do physical humor, you know? It really is. It, it's, like, hard to, like, make that, like, your own, you know, because everybody has their thing, you know? And, like, you don't use any props or anything? No. Just the microphone stand? Just the microphone stand. Not bad. I like that. I, I was on edibles when I came up with it. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it shows. <laughs> so, I, I, mean, I represent, you know? When you did it, I... You represent what? <laughs> you said I represent the, after you the, used the, the Disney Corporation for Jungle Book. That's right. <laughs> You have a great look. What is your ethnicity, if I may uh, ask? My dad's Jewish. My mom's Filipino. Oh, you're Puerto Rican. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, son. I'm sorry. Those are East, these are East Coast hack jokes. I know a lot of you guys. Even though, let's face it, it was touch and go up there. Look at the faces out there. There's a lot of people who wish they were you right now. That's true. Look when that. when you yeah. when you jumped on the ground, you really the, the reaction I got was I was scared for a second. I was like, "What the fuck is going on? What the fuck is he? He's hurting himself." Did you, like, did you it, hurt yourself? The mic stand was really didn't coming off. Hurt your himself. Heart. He's high. He doesn't know what happened. <laughs> is that a bit that you do regularly? Yeah, I did it downstairs. So you already did that bit tonight. Yeah. Did it work down there? Oh yeah. Really? It crushes. Wow. <laughs> it crushes, huh? <laughs> well, I, I, don't, I don't start out that strong. Usually I start out softer. Yeah. But um, with a minute, I'm just like, oh, God. Okay. All right. All right. <clears throat> Interesting. So jump, jump straight to laying down on the ground so that nobody beyond the front row can see you. Yeah. And then lifting that up and slamming. I get it, though. It's scaring the fuck out of those people that can see. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah I, th I think he did scare a few of the people up front. That's what it, that's what it was, a little bit. Well, he, his name's Jared, too, so that's why. Oh, oh I thought he was coming go. up. Reverse crowd work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to know your audience, but no, don't know their fucking names. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jared. Well, uh, did you have fun tonight? Oh, yeah. Cool, man. What are you going to do now? What's, what's uh, the rest of a normal Monday night look like well, for a guy like you, who looks like he just does uh, you know, lines of coke off of the back of skateboards? <laughs> That's so un uh, well, um, I I'm, I'm going to go to the girl I'm seeing's house. She's going to make me soup. Uh, make you soup. Wow. 
that was the dumbest look on a face I've ever seen after <laughs> you said that. That thing you do, like you exhale out of your nose and you just like, it's like very Asian girl to smile like, oh, so, you know. Oh, man, Scott likes those. There you go. Still bombing. Jared Levin, everybody. Oh, Jesus. There he goes. Jared Levin, everybody. No He's there. on Twitter at Jared Levin Lost. Tony That's all one Twitter handle. For those of you that like using 140 characters on the handle. Uh, <laughs> What's the Jared. name of this sh uh, podcast again? The Dream Crasher or the uh, <laughs> Reverse Disney World? Is that what this place is? <laughs> hey, Fung Chow had a blast up here. That was fucking epic. Yeah, I feel like seeing him again, actually. I like uh, Fung Chow, that cave kid who was up here, the cave boy, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, whatchamacallit, the, the glasses white kid who looks like he died in every World War II movie. That kid, <laughs> so far. Fung Chow was great. He speaks better English than Josh Martin, and Josh Martin was born in America. Wow. Guys, your next comedian, uh, funny guy, he's been on the show before. Put your hands together for Ian Ellis. I know they do. Ian Ellis. Coming up. From Chicago, where I spent all this weekend. It's Ian Ellis, everybody. Put your hands together. There you go. Welcome aboard, Ian. Yeah, man. I, uh, I don't have any nail clippers. <laughs> I lost them in the divorce. <laughs> Speaking of cunts. Uh, <laughs> so I was pussy fucking my girlfriend. And the, the condom broke. And I didn't stop fucking her because it felt really good. Like, it's weird. Like, my penis just, like, it really likes to feel a vagina. It's weird. I, does that happen to you guys? <laughs> so after I came in her pussy, I, I made her get the morning after pill. But I didn't have her get it the morning after. I had to get it the moment after. <laughs> I was like, baby, you got to go. <laughs> She's like, can I finish picking the broken pieces of condom out of my vagina? Before we run to Walgreens, fucking Romeo. And I was like, no, bitch. <laughs> and then, like, the, the lady at Walgreens was like, do you have any questions about the morning after pill? And she's like, what are the side effects? I don't know anything about it. You don't know anything about the morning after pill? And she was like, no, I just started dating a guy that lives in his parents' basement. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Ian Ellis. I love you. Good night. That's excellent. Oh. <laughs> Ian, it's good to like describe the story. Don't make us there. That's the thing. I felt like I was right there. <laughs> I felt like I caught a load on the face somewhere in that joke. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is watch out, Mark Twain. We have another great storyteller. <laughs> and it's you. <here. laughs> you didn't fuck around, man. You came right out. I think cunt was the third word in. I fucking like that. I like that. I mean, you know, you only got a minute. Uh, it's a word economy. I liked it. That's Very word good. efficient. Dropping yeah. the C word, that's, that's, that is balls, I guess. Yeah, right, three words out. Well, you know, he definitely committed to it, you know. What I can't stand is a guy that will say cunt and then, like, backtrack. I mean, you went cunt and kept going woman-hating all the way. Uh, yeah. You did not pussyfoot in it at all. Like, uh, Pardon the pun. <laughs> right. Yeah, I also love pussy-fucking. I mean, that's yeah, one of that's my, favorite my favorite terms that I don't think I've ever heard before. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. So, I mean... I'll give you those points for sure. That's insane. Yeah. I gotta be a credible man. Really spelling as, it as out. As opposed to throat fucking, <laughs> ass fucking, <laughs> pussy fucking. No, I think just by that one phrase we get like your whole origin story. You're an orphan who was raised in a junkyard <laughs> somewhere outside of somewhere near Illinois yep. behind a kid rock concert. <laughs> so we get it. How close is he to write on that? Yeah, mm -hmm. nice. Oh <laughs> You wanna go through a divorce? Yeah, man. No, no, I could tell by the way you said it. <laughs> I could, you weren't fucking around. You didn't just say it. You, you could tell. I lost it in divorce. Nice. I got it. And how old are you, man? I'm uh, 32. Too old to be a teen shooter. <laughs> now. <laughs> I'm not Asian either. <laughs> no, but you, you definitely have your own style, man. That's pretty awesome for a guy. How long have you been doing it? I'm um, coming up on like four or five years now. Sweet. Yeah, you did the man. majority of that in Chicago. How long have you been in L.A.? I've been here about two months, and uh, thank you to Attell for putting Junior Stopka out there, because yeah. he's a fucking Chicago legend. I love seeing him on TV. Junior's yeah. awesome. He's great. And, uh, you know, thank Doug Stanhope for uh, oh, yeah. putting Junior out there. So, you know, 
There we go. Now it's cool, a man. big stroke Chicago's fest. one of my favorite cities, man. I love that place. That's fucking oh, awesome. Man. Yeah, it's a great town, man. Yeah, I was just there this weekend. Uh, I can fucking eat Portillo's beef sandwiches for <laughs> fucking three meals a day. That shit's fucking like mother's milk. <laughs> Everybody there is pretty thick. There's, I really stood out there as a skinny guy. Yeah, you are really too skinny for that town. <laughs> and everybody else was thick, and the marathon in Chicago was Sunday. So by like the That's second nuts. show, I started telling them they need more marathons in that city. <laughs> they need mandatory marathons. Chicago's got a great sense of humor because they're almost like, they're like, you know, I, I have a belief that the colder it gets, the better comedy is. At least from what I've noticed from going up to Canada, yeah. Chicago definitely has that shit weather. That's where. why Edmonton rocks. Yeah, <laughs> no, it really does. I've been there. Those fucking people are animals. They like hockey fights and hard jokes. So, so do you work here too, or you don't? No, man, they won't give me a job. All right, well, you know what? You got like a cool thing. You remind me, I guess, what you're like. Uh, your style reminds me just a little bit of Hedberg, you know. But that's okay, though. That's okay because you're starting out, you know. But uh, you definitely have your own take on stuff, and I think that's really cool. Not that I, you know, I have no good advice for anybody i mean look at me but you uh you you're, you're definitely uh doing it man so yeah, keep going yeah we're good job man really yeah, Fuck yeah. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. he's on twitter at chicago open mic also an awesome artist he's made great fan art uh for us before at chicago open mic ian ellis so we're gonna women, just man. keep going until the crowd leaves yeah, yeah. what's that no, we're almost there i feel sorry for the next guy this is the check spot minute spot right the what? Do you have a check spot in the minute of these poor guys' acts or no? No, no. This okay. goes, you know, this, you know, it's a comedy store. They don't really have a check spot. Here. Isn't it funny how this is happening right now in North Korea, but for food? Anyway. <laughs> 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 All right, who's up next? Your next comedian. Put your hands together for Rob Banks. Rob Banks. There he is, everybody. It's Rob Banks. How are we doing, guys? Good. How's it going? I didn't get a fantasy football this year, which is a real bummer. So, which is really hard because when you watch football and you don't get anything out of it, then it's not really worth watching it. So, I decided to take Facebook and make it my fantasy football team. So, I have a 500-person roster, and I have my mom starting as my quarterback every week. The way that I pointed out is off of likes on comments, and so my mom's really bringing the points. I do uh, let my sister go because she kept posting baby pictures, and that just wasn't going. Uh, surprisingly, I'm still friends with Ray Rice, but you gotta understand where, you're, where he's coming from. He's a black man with a Chinese name. No wonder he's angry and hitting people. All right, you went for it. <laughs> Combining Facebook and fantasy football is a ballsy move. I like the idea of using Facebook as a game, maybe. Uh, I don't know if it has to be fantasy football, but just having the idea of, of like, if you post a baby picture, you're out of there or something like that. I do like where you're going at with that. Maybe think of some more ideas around that and like the first 20 seconds you were explaining about the fantasy football and the football thing and it was just kind of like all right that didn't need to be there like even if you wanted it to be a fantasy football facebook thing you could just say i didn't get my fantasy football it sucks so i'm using facebook now you could just go right into that i don't know you yeah. know i liked it though my fantasies don't go anywhere near a football field uh in my fantasy league i had the miami dolphins cheerleaders against the dallas cowboy cheerleaders this week how does that work out? Uh, just fucking doesn't really. I was just fucking around. I didn't, uh, <laughs> I, I, that's all I had for that. I didn't flush it out. But, uh, yeah, but I, Rob, I, was, I was confused a little bit up front, too, when you went into it. But, uh, I, you know, I get it. It needs to be uh, flushed out a little more with the baby pictures and stuff like yeah. that. How long have you done stand-up? Uh, three years now. Where are you from? Ohio. You say that like uh, I'm supposed to know that? <laughs> I, uh, what, what we talk Well... I, well, I know you guys are from Ohio, too. Yeah. He's been on the show a few times. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I know that I'm from Ohio, but you told me that yeah. you're from Ohio like I'm supposed to know. <laughs> Where at in Ohio? Akron. Oh, nice. The uh, home of Goodyear Tires. Yeah. Yawn. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you know when you're talking about Ohio that like that, then you know it's like, oh, man. 
Wow. <laughs> Either way, the football thing. Uh, did you play football in school? Yeah. See, he's from Ohio. That's that's, that's got to show. The rubber belt they call where he's from. Again, because of that Goodyear <laughs> thing. Um, Rob, uh, how long have you been in L.A.? Uh, I'm in November. Will be a year. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> Are you getting sta- are you getting stage time? Are you getting stage time? Yes. Yet? Good. Then that's all you need to do. All the guys have been up here. It looks like they're all like trying to get the stage time. That's like ninety percent of the job is getting that stage time. So you guys are all doing it. The fact that you guys are out all night doing it that means that you're really committed, and that's cool. So, you know, the fact that you had a minute to do like a bit, yeah, it, it just shows you that like you know setups. There's setups, and then there's like too long a setup. But what can you do in a minute? You know. Yeah. So, I just, so I just, you hit them with the bit that you wanted to do, right? Yeah, I just want to get the Ray Rice punchline out. There you go. And try to build it the best I can. But away. why would Ray Rice? <laughs> why would Ray? Out of everything that you set up in that joke, why would Ray Rice, other than just the fact that he's in the news? I don't understand how it applies to your mom and your sister being on Facebook. It's I. It's he had a fucking minute, bro. He couldn't break it all down. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like, like his, but in a minute, I say you still you could still do a joke in under a minute. I'm yeah, just but now these guys the are way, picking bits that, instead way, of jokes. Yeah, by the way, that was a fucking engagement punch in the elevator. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying that's, that's true love. <laughs> It's a cultural thing. She's still fucking married him. What he and her do in the business in her own private elevator is their fucking business. All right? I don't give hey, a fuck. we're not here to pick the new head of the NFL. All right? We're here <laughs> to help young comics experience the... All right, man. Good job, dude. Good job. There you go. Oh, yeah. Rob Banks. Good job, man. Good job, Scott. He's on Twitter at comic Rob Banks. Scott, what'd you think of Rob Banks? Have you been seeing him on the scene? You're out there grinding all the time. Uh, not so much. No. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> Did somebody throw a mist of Ambien in the air or the sprinkler system or something? Come on, man. There's Sorry, no I'm female community. Oh, this, this crowd is on the edge of their seats yeah, waiting we, to we, leave. We need, <laughs> I think we need to... Uh, you want to pick we're, out a, you pick out a female? We're about, we're, we are eight minutes away from two females, oh, nice. no matter what happens. Okay. No matter what happens. I don't, this is very, this is like a, this is too Taliban-y. I mean, you have all the guys, <laughs> and two, two, two scared women at the very, end. It's very, it's very ISIS. <laughs> I, use the, I use the bucket to keep it fair, but yeah. sometimes. There's, there's a girl by the, the back door that I want to see up. She's just been sitting there staring. Okay. Come on up. Everybody in this room is yeah. a comic, right? Yeah. All right, cool. Give her a shot. Yeah. Your, Whoa, what's, she didn't even get picked. That's what's, awesome. What's yeah. your name? What's your name? Luco. Guys, give it up for it. Luco. Luco. I don't know. Uh, Tyler Perry is about to have his first child, which I am very happy about because it'll have given more time to focus on his baby instead of writing another Medea movie. Oh. <laughs> nice. What was Medea like, 97 in the last movie? I think Tyler Perry's next title of his movie should be Medea's Rest in Peace. I can see it on the marquee now. But I think Medea should go out in like a shootout like Queen Latifah did and set it off. <laughs> Knowing Tyler Perry, he'll probably have Medea's Resurrection. But I really appreciate everything he is doing for the gay, I mean the black community. <laughs> okay. Oh dear, oh dear. Okay. That's excellent. <laughs> yeah, fun. Tyler Perry stuff. I don't even. I didn't even know Queen Latifah was in a shootout in the movie. Set it off, but I still you enjoyed it. it. I like your earrings too, man. Thank Very you. cool. You got two how long have you been? On. How long have you been doing uh, comedy? A year. You're doing great. Yeah, That's awesome. Those are great earrings. But though. you'll never be in a Tyler Perry movie. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll never be in a Tyler. You never will be in a Tyler Perry movie. <laughs> yeah, now. Just fuck I yourself. thought that, but <laughs> you're good with that. You can go I'm with okay that. Okay with that. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Where are you from? L. A. Oh, wow. Nice. Ouch. Nice. What'd you do before doing the <laughs> <laughs> Am I a nice representation of L.A. girls or something? Yes, you certainly Thank are. You. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Oh, wow. That's the, <laughs> that's the <laughs> other podcast. Yeah, Shoulder that's action that's for the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a good thing I'm wearing my sponge underpants, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to wake up with a little potato flip. Can I get that cigarette? <laughs> Easy, cupcake. All right. Here's the <laughs> I just need to be here. This helped, went from right? podcast to the parking lot in an hour. <laughs> really quickly. Either way, the, I like how you came up and you hit a joke like bang. I love yeah. that. I and love jokes. And you hit it like bang, bang. I like that. Right. Uh, what did you do before you were doing stand-up? Um, nursing. I do home care. Oh, nice. 
Can I ask you something? How many times has a white, skinny guy like that talked to you in your life? A lot. Exactly. Something about like, you know what? Well, you know, if you want us to turn the heat back on, you're going to have to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right? Does he look like every social service guy? Oh, I, I see that earring is a, uh, I see one key. of your earrings is a giant a key. key. Be careful. There's a guy with a uh, necklace that he's adding to. And the nail to. clipper guy, too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Be careful. Did you make those earrings yourself? I did. That's racist. No, it's not. Oh, sorry. <laughs> look, at the, look at the size of that fucking earring. I'm not no, Asian. I don't make everything. No, no it's not. The, look at that. Chung Fang, where are you, dude? Chung, where's Chung Fang when you need him, man? <laughs> we like can that. make earrings together. That's awesome. Wow. <laughs> I Dang, found it like on a notebook a, and a, I look just... How, look at the size of it. Oh, that's head. cool. I didn't see a key on that side. Yeah, yeah. Two different shit. ears. You get cable with those? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever been with an Asian guy? No. Chow Fang. And I yeah. won't be with one either. Whoa. Oh, no, she did. Oh, shit. I think your tattoos on your arms are really sexy, though, but once we get down below them, I don't yeah, think Yeah, you never really see that. She wants you, never see, you never really see an Asian guy with a sleeve. Your that tattoo pretty... sleeves are dope, but yeah. we'll probably, you'll probably just finger bang me. You got any tats? It's excellent. You got any tats? One tattoo, it's a key. Finger bang, that's the town he's from. What's, it's a key. Go ahead. So, I like this chick, she's good. <laughs> Oh, fucking hilarious. Either you way, you fucking rocked out with those jokes, man. That was Thank good. You, you got good a job. great style. What, what's the, uh, your material? Do you have any material of you being a nurse? Uh, or is, Are you um, dirtier? or like what's, no, your, what's, your normal, what's your normal act? No, because nurses uh, are dirty. They're a little... They're a little uh, my dad's African, so I do some talk about being raised with the African dad. My mom's from Compton, so it's kind of weird growing up. Where'd they meet? At a party. Oh, yeah? In All right. Compton. Sorry. Whoa, easy. No, I'm kidding. All right. <laughs> Jesus. I'm mad because I don't have a good parent meeting story, okay? I'm sorry. All right. Well, let, let me fill in the blanks you. here. So your dad's African <laughs> and your mom's from Compton. Yeah. So, and they met in L.A. or in Africa? Yeah, in L.A. Okay, cool. All right. Yeah. So you're born and raised in Compton? Born and raised in L.A. What part of L.A.? Like 34th and Central by U.S. Yeah. Oh, okay. right on the corner of 4th and Motherfucker down there. Now, after yeah. you... After after you guys looted his grandpa's grocery, right. let me ask you this. Yeah, yeah, like that happened now. Like that really happened now. Sorry. <laughs> no, seriously, I'm sorry. <clears throat> um, what's the craziest thing you've seen happen around that neighborhood? What's that like down there? I don't. I have no idea where 34th and Central is. I'm we guessing. Can go tomorrow. I'm guessing the only time I'm ever there is when I go 20 minutes past the airport. Uh, accidentally. Um, I don't know. There were a lot of prostitutes down by my house. Oh, you've been there. Yeah, you've been there. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's a... You, you, they, they, there you were like this, prostitutes. They filmed this episode of Naked and Afraid there. He was a naked yeah. prostitute, and he didn't have a condom. Do you get a, do you get a discount? Naked and Afraid? No. That's a show? Naked and afraid. All right, so go yeah, ahead. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, prostitutes in churches. So that's one time I failed hot. a math quiz, and my dad's an engineer, and he drove me down and was like, if you don't study your math, you will be one of these prostitutes. That's great. Wow. Wow. That's one of my jokes. But yeah. So why did you go into comedy instead of tennis? <laughs> <laughs> wow. You got to give it. And hey, I you got to give it. And I come I on now. You got to give it to Tyler Perry all night now. I didn't have enough color braids to put in, so oh, I nice said, let me stop it. I didn't have we'll enough work beans. on that. Right. I love your style. Nice. Good Thank job. Good you. energy. What you was your right. name again? Can you want to you want to promote? Akila Aluko. You're you on Twitter or anything? Yes. Anything you want to promote? Um, no, not. Really. What's your Twitter address? Want to give a shout out? Yeah, really. I want to <laughs> give a shout out to my grandma in Compton. I'm sure she's <laughs> listening to this and Death Squad podcast. No, really. <laughs> You, you're awesome. You came up with the hard jokes. Thank I love it. Thank you so it. much. Yeah, very good. Can I be the black girl in the Oreo cookie girls at the end, please? No, we don't need that. Okay. All right. Anyway. Oh. <laughs> I'm asking you. Tony, but it's okay. Thank, Thank you job. for your time. Good Thank job, you, guys. Man. Oh, shit. Right. That, was that was heated. Heck, yeah. That was heated. I love it. We went that was dance. like the last season of Mad TV. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> heated. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, yeah, it was. Because there was one black girl on that too, Mad TV. Yeah. Okay. What was her name? Are you still talking? Okay. So who's next? <laughs> this is I'm the part sorry. where we have both of our regulars who are both oh, ladies. Oh fuck yeah! So it's all estrogen from here on this out. This is guys. good. Finally, Akila nice. got it Sticking started. Sticking all the swinging dicks up here. 
Uh, put your hands together for your first regular. You know her from uh, all the Kill Tony podcasts. She started here on this podcast, and uh, she uh, dropped out of her last semesters at the University of Florida. And now she's co emceeing all over the country. Please put your hands together for Kimberly Congdon. <laughs> Hey guys, um, a while back I had a pregnancy scare, which was terrifying. I was really worried uh, because I don't think I'm responsible enough to be a mother. So I took a test and BuzzFeed said I'm definitely not ready and I got an abortion. <laughs> it was done. Uh, unlike the abortion, that joke kind of delivered. <laughs> I was on Facebook today and um, I thought this was pretty funny. A woman said that uh, gay people were ruining everything and that they were going to make children go instinct. <laughs> Which is weird because gay people have been gay since like the beginning of people, you know? Like I feel like cavemen were like, no, I'm not sucking dick, I'm starting a fire. Like it's always happened. Uh, I think the meanest thing I've ever said to a gay guy was, how did your voice know? <laughs> That's funny. Kimberly Condon, what do you guys think? I thought, uh, once again, great joke writing. For Thank how you. long? Uh, a little over a year. Awesome. Yeah, the year. ladies are writing some hard jokes here. I love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What, what's the BuzzFeed? I didn't get that. Oh, uh, because uh, a lot of people take BuzzFeed quizzes and tests. Yeah. Come like, on, Grandpa. Yeah. yeah. Get on the net. <laughs> Wow! You luddite, don't you know? You gotta take a BuzzFeed. You guys take quiz. BuzzFeed? I didn't know. I, I knew it was. I knew it was an online quiz. I thought maybe. I, I mean, I see them on Facebook and all that. Oh stuff. Yeah. yeah, I sit on the computer all day, so it's everyone that ha you know is on the computer all day is just sharing BuzzFeed. Yeah, you daily share and that stuff. Yeah. is fucking obnoxious, right? Yeah, it's terrible. I had, a, I had a scare at an abortion clinic one time. I fucking locked my keys in my car and I just yelled over, "Hey, <laughs> anybody get a hanger?" They uh, chased me for three blocks. <laughs> No. That's inappropriate. Is that inappropriate? No, I don't, I'm trying to be the crowd. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, so that's cool. So how many? How, how, so you've been doing it for a year. So how many? How much time do you think you have now? Well, I, I've done it for over a year. So. Oh, excuse mm -hmm. me. I didn't know. Uh, <laughs> Shit. No, we were shooting an hour uh, special. Let me ask in you here. another question. Uh, how many abortions have you had? Well, one more, and I get the next one free. Ah, uh, that's. I'm kidding. I don't know. No, I've done over 60 new minutes, but I think I feel like I went back and I counted the ones I really like, and I probably used 15 to 17 of them. Of minutes or jokes? Jokes. Like you write a new Not minutes. You do, you do a new minute jokes every time you come on this minute. on yeah. this pot. You that's do a new that's balls. Yeah, that's I excellent. Yeah, that's really yeah. good. Yeah. Do you tape yourself and listen to the tape? Oh, it's well, this podcast. one's taped, but yeah, every other set I I tape myself. Every other set. Why is that? Because I do other sets. Hold on, somebody's opening up a, a four loco. Yeah, could you What's calm going down? on? <laughs> yeah, go, so, go ahead, miss. So you go. don't need to recycle the bottle in the room. Jeez, they'll do that later. The fuck are you doing? So do you tape yourself or not? I don't videotape myself. No, I no, no, myself. audio, audio. Yes, all of them. Because that's that's the best way. Because hearing the joke and hearing it all the different ways. That's excellent. That you're doing that. Yeah. That is like that will drive you insane. I just more have a hard time. I'm listening. talking. That would drive you insane more than anything. <laughs> you know, it was all about her for a second. Here. <laughs> Go ahead, Tony. Sorry. Um, Tony, you tape, right? You tape and you listen to the jokes. Everything, yeah. Yeah, it's the yeah. hardest. It's yeah. It's really the worst. It's really hard to listen to it, but I, yeah. I try to, when, I, when I'm done with the recording, if there's one thing that I know stood out to me about it, like I just label it as the set, you know, like when you okay it and it's like name file and sometimes I would just hit okay and it'd be like new recording 135 and it's like, what the fuck is that? So now what I do is like, you know, jizz pants or whatever work. Oh yeah, your buzzword. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, you're on every week. I don't know what you do during the day. You said you're on the computer. I'm a um, I'm a receptionist and assistant. Oh, nice. Interesting. So, just on the computer all day. How does that turn out for you? It's easy. Mm -hmm. It's a breeze. It's and you've been doing nice. a lot of spots at night. Yeah. Anything crazy happened lately? Any um, breakthroughs? Anything fun? Yeah, I did the Ice House with Joe. Yeah, and how I was did, it? I did Comedy Juice. Oh, nice. Oh. So it was really fun. That's awesome. It was really, really fun. How many minutes did you do? Uh, I did five. Oh, that's funny. I just did a Jews cleanse. I got rid of all my representation. <laughs> <laughs> that was really fun. 
Well, fun times. Yeah. Thanks, Kim. Thank you. Kimberly Congdon, oh, everybody. Very, very Follow her on Twitter Kim. at Kimberly Congdon. Excellent. Jews cleanse? Nothing for Nice. Me. I didn't really hear it. it I said like, I did a Jews cleanse. I got rid of all my representation. Oh, Nothing. All right. A it's Jews all right. Sorry. cleanse. All right. Just now I get it. It was, like when the, uh, it was like when the other guy said Gildigan, and I thought I, I didn't. Nervous, I, yeah, I he's nervous, dude. I never would have put Gilligan, but I, I didn't hear <laughs> Jews cleanse, or else I would have laughed harder, Jimmy. Guys, our other regular... Always goofy, always fun. Put your hands together for Sarah Weinshanks, everybody. Nice. Yes. Yeah. What's up? What's up? Really, really fucking happy. I never have to take another science class again. I hated science. Science teachers are just like doctors that couldn't make it. All science teachers are fucking weirdos. I never want to look at another microscope again. I don't even know what the hell you're supposed to scope. When you look, when I was looking into the microscope, scope, I scoped nothing. I was like, wait, what are we looking at? Am I training to be a doctor? You want me to look through a lens at a specimen? I'm in sixth fucking grade. You want me to look at a lens and scope it out? There's nothing to scope. I don't care what a plant looks like. I don't want to draw it. I'd rather look through a kaleidoscope. Bring me a fucking kaleidoscope. I don't need a microscope. I want to see some colors. Good job. Commitment. Yeah, you're all angry about <laughs> yeah. that sixth grade science class. Yeah. I think you've had enough time to get over it. Need it to be said. <laughs> How long have you been doing this? A few years. There you go. And that's a character? Yeah. Doing? Well, it's like another side of me, but I don't walk around like that. Like, I'm a normal person. You know what I mean? I'm not always on, but I. this is how I feel inside. But this is you right now. We're this talking is me. to you? When I'm talking to you right now, yes. I'm not going to yell at you. Okay. So, um, well, at least unless, and You know, unless I'm fired up. <laughs> okay, but the other, the other character is a composite of what? Of how I feel internally, but I'm a lady. You're a lady. I'm a lady, but I'm an angry lady. But in public situations, I will be my most ladylike self. But this is my place to be how I really feel. Last question. Yes. <laughs> Who picked out those pants? You were the character. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm wondering if that's part of the character. Uh, no. I All definitely right. picked these out. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Bob. Now, wine shank. Normally, your style is you take something small, you know, and and delve into it and break it to open. Make it bigger. Yeah. River like a Seinfeld. Yes, exactly. Go ahead. Exactly. Normally, it's like you know, shaving cream or something, you know, something that people deal with usually. And I think that's what sort of happened here tonight is you went from taking these niche things and making them bigger to your niche thing. Nobody in this. I mean, who's you're talking about microscoping. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's, it also was like one joke that you seem like you kind of just repeated through the whole thing. Okay. Well, I so many of your things are usually story. condiments and like things that people see or deal with. So, I mean, I'm just saying like, okay. what do you think about what made you so passionate about your sixth grade like because microscopes? Because everyone who went to school and wasn't fucking around had to look through a microscope at some point, right? Uh-huh. And so I felt like that was going to be relatable, but maybe I didn't make it relatable enough. But I know for a fact a lot of these eyes have seen what I've seen Did through you, a microscope, which is nothing. It's let's, all go back to our, let's go back to our Asian comic. Did you find that interesting, science, or no? <laughs> the pants Thank you. are interesting. In all your days of microscoping, Sarah, did you did you ever use the knob on the side of the microscope <laughs> to adjust the level to, to, to go up to where so it became really cool? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I was gonna talk about the knobs and I forgot. I wrote that down. I'm yeah. sick of knob jokes. I'm glad you fucking let that out personally. Breath of fresh slides. air. Did you put a slide in there? What was on the fucking slide? A specimen. I, I don't know what it was. Yeah. Blood. I'm like I don't care. Plants. See, I had my own so this is from your high school days that you were talking about, it's right? It's just like, I think sometimes, I don't know how the fuck I passed biology. 
Yeah. And I'm glad that I don't have to look in any more fucking microscopes. All right. You know? <laughs> hey. Fuck. Oh, I got it. I, I understand. I grew up with a microscope, but it was a lot, I guess, cooler for a kid, to, uh, like a boy to grow up, like putting your cum on there and looking at it. Or looking <laughs> well, at it. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. And you know, he used this to beat off. Listen, the thing is. Oh, I just so. think it's it, it's funny, but it's in some so parts of the world, crazy. girls aren't even allowed to fucking wear shoes. So, yeah. you know, the fact that you get to look in a microscope, I mean, yeah. really, come on. Yeah. Be a little more third world you know, about it. You could have been a fucking CSI had you fucking liked looking through a microscope. You could have had a whole fucking other career not being criticized by fucking us. You could have been on a fucking, yeah. you know, a, a homicide fucking solving team. But I would hate that. <laughs> is, there, is there anything uh, that this, you know, anything happened lately that you're more passionate about than microscopes? Or is microscopes oh. really at the forefront of everything? Like, <laughs> you seem like you're really venting like a teapot. Is that where it all went downhill? Um, I was just thinking, like, well, there's other shit, yeah. I was thinking about and maybe I was just one thing. Like anything else crazy going on? Well, 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 I remembered something that happened in a relationship, and then I got pissed and sad, and then I, I felt a lot of things. Well, save it for next week. Next week. <laughs> yeah, really. That was a nice little Easter egg, a little teaser. Yeah, really nice tease, nice tease. If you love the microscope, Paige, you're gonna love this. Hey, you know what though? You've got great energy, and you're like you're different, and that's like it takes everybody forever to find out who they are. I think you got you know who you are, so that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank totally. you. Oh, sorry. No, no yeah, no. absolutely. I appreciate it. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah Weinshank, everybody. Yay. Give it up. She did it again. The girls both with a brand new minute. So that is, fun. That's amazing that they're each doing a new every minute every week. week. Yeah, yeah, that's really wow, cool. Wow, Tony. Yeah. yeah. Either you're fucking, you're a Svengali to get them to do that kind of shit. What's a Svengali? I don't know. It's like a uh, good man. Like a mind reader. Either way. These girls come up here and they do a new minute every week. Yeah. And they get to perform it all during the week and then they come up. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's fun. They go work on their minute and they come back and bring it to wow. Kill Tony. It's nice. Yeah. And then they go do lo longer sets other places and slide the minute in and rotate a new 30 with the old. I mean, they could do it anyway, you know. But uh, the only thing is a new minute here. Guys. I don't think I could do a new minute in a week like that. It's interesting because mm -hmm. it would level out too. I mean, it's not like everything's going to always, you know, connect. Like uh, Kim said, she's done, you know, 70 some episodes or whatever. And, you know, she was honest, honestly saying, you know, between whatever she said, 15 and 17, which I think that's probably about what I was at shortly after a year. But, um, you know, it's not always hits, but, it, it, you know, it is 52 new minutes a year. Well, it's, a, it's the writing. It's the constant writing and writing and coming up with stuff. I mean, that's where you you find it. It's writing and performing and writing and performing and writing and performing. Right. That's, and what, that's, it, that's what gets you better. And most people, I feel like most comedians don't really get that until a few years in is how much writing and work that it is. So it, it's good that they're starting off on sort of like a different regimen. Yeah, plus it's ballsy. I mean, you come up every week, you're doing a new minute. I mean, that's, you know, you, it's great. So there they are. Put your hands together for Kimberly Congdon and Sarah Weinshank, everybody. So fun. Guys, we did it. Kill Tony 70-something. Hashtag 70-something. Uh, put your hands together for Scott Kidd. He's our patriot this week. Scott, anything you want to promote? You're at Devo Kid on Twitter. That's at D-E-V-O-K-I-D-D, -D -D, correct? Yes, that's correct. Anything else coming up? I've uh, been helping some friends out. Anytime with Doug Reed, check it out, guys. Bad News Weekly. Why not? Sure. I'm not sure what the name of any of that is. Or oh, what you series. Don't worry about it. Okay. There you go. Next time, if you say that before, people will actually be able to Google it or something. Scott Kid, everyone. Our sponsor was Elise Lane. She's at the Girl with the Pan on Instagram yeah. and Facebook. On Twitter, she's at Elise Lane. Delicious oven roasted potato wedges with steak and mushrooms, mm, so and good. a vegan it's poutine. A vegan poutine for me. Oh, nice. A vegan? Are you vegan? <laughs> a little bit. I don't like to talk about it, but wow. <laughs> you know, it's sort of like a, a little bit. It's sort you of a, yeah. So on fucking Thanksgiving at your house, you have trimmings with all the trimmings, is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> we can sit around and carve the mashed potatoes if we go over your place for Thanksgiving. I kill it on Thanksgiving. Tofurky, toast stuffing, Yeah, well, you can go fuck yourself, because I eat that <laughs> shit. I want some fucking meat and some stuffing like a goddamn human being. Dave Attell, everybody. Thank you for having me, guys.
What's coming up? What do you want people to listen to? When does this when does this episode air? A couple weeks. A couple weeks. Yep. Uh, if it's around uh, Veterans Day, I'm doing a Veterans Day benefit for the Military Family Assistance Association at Gotham. That's November 11th. That's Veterans Day. And uh, please come by. We need your help. And uh, if not, maybe you'll catch me at the Comedy Underground live version at uh, the Village Underground in New York City. Because I assume we'll be having some that way. We're doing some this way, that way. And uh, for those of you who watch and the comics who supported it, thank you so much. So thank Hell you. yeah. Thank David Tell. Giving comedians a shot on Comedy Underground on Comedy Central, including Jimmy Schubert, who yes. was on that show. Yeah, it's great. It's one of the best comedy shows on TV. Jimmy, what else? Uh, nothing, man. I'm going to be out touring. If uh, people go to JimmySchubert.com, check my uh, tour schedule. I'm going to Austin. I'm going to be at the Borgata in Atlantic City. I'm also going to Winston-Salem. I'll be in uh, Phoenix. And then uh, for Thanksgiving, I'm actually doing uh, Gitmo. I'll go over there and do some shows for the military as well. I'm giving up the Thanksgiving to go do some shows for those guys. So. Follow these guys on Twitter. It's at Jimmy Schubert and at Attell, A-T-T-E-L-L. Come see me in Red Band in Toronto. Kill Tony goes to Toronto in November to the Dark Comedy Festival. Kill Tony live in Toronto. Come see us in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, and uh, other fun things. Great big announcements always coming. Thanks for listening and thank you live audience. That's yeah. Kill Tony uh, 70 something. Like Captain Crunch, number